Space planes are unique engineering feats that come with different benefits and downsides compared to regular spacecraft. They also come in many different shapes and sizes, with the Space Shuttle and Dream Chaser being great examples. In the past, the shuttle revolutionized space access and what was capable. Now in 2023, Sierra Space and Dream Chaser are hoping to do the same. In the last couple of months, we've seen an increase in progress from the company regarding the first Dream Chaser test article expected to go to space named Tenacity. This involves finishing heat shield application and an upcoming shipment for final ground testing. Once complete, the only other factor influencing this launch is the first flight of Vulcan scheduled in a couple of months, which Tenacity will launch on in the future. However, with Vulcan a few months behind schedule and this being Dream Chaser's first ever mission, a lot can come in the way of this launch set to happen in the third quarter of this year. Here I'll go more in depth into some of the recent updates on both Dream Chaser Tenacity and Vulcan, what to expect on this first mission, the significance of the space plane, and more. As the scheduled first mission closes in, more and more progress is being made on tenacity and other important factors. Most recently, about one week ago, Sierra Space tweeted saying, As the first Dream Chaser space plane enters its final production phase, Sierra Space has made a key executive hire with veteran aerospace leader Steve Barris joining the leadership team as senior vice president and general manager. Most importantly, with this announcement, they provided a press release that went more in depth into tenacity's current status and future plans. Specifically, the report was quoted saying, The first Dream Chaser, Tenacity, is nearing completion and will subsequently ship to NASA's Neil A. Armstrong Test Facility in Cleveland, Ohio, for final space environmental testing ahead of its first mission to the ISS later this year. The Neil A. Armstrong Test Facility, formerly known as Plumbrook Station, is a remote test facility for the NASA Glenn Research Center. In Dream Chaser Tenacity's case, we can expect to see a pressure test, among other things, at the facility. Back in 2020, a Dream Chaser pressure test article arrived at this exact test complex from Louisville, Colorado, and was transported to the high bay in the space station processing facility. The pressure test article was used to validate that Dream Chaser could withstand the demands associated with repeated launches and returns from space. SNC designed the Dream Chaser spacecraft to be reusable for as many as 15 missions. The pressure article specifically verified the composite and bonded structure of the spacecraft. In addition, the Space Environments Complex, or SEC, houses the world's largest and most powerful space environment simulation facilities, including the Space Simulation Vacuum Chamber, measuring 100 feet or 30 meters in diameter by 122 feet or 36 meters high. The Reverberant Acoustic Test Facility is the world's most powerful spacecraft acoustic test chamber, which can simulate the noise of a spacecraft launch up to 163 decibels or as loud as the thrust of 20 jet engines. The Mechanical Vibration Facility is the world's highest capacity and most powerful spacecraft shaker system, subjecting test articles to the rigorous conditions of launch, practically all of which we can expect Dream Chaser Tenacity to be put through. Months ago, Sierra Space confirmed that Tenacity had begun the thorough process of installing thousands of individual thermal tiles around the entire spacecraft. Based on this recent update and the time frame provided, we can assume this heat shield process is already complete or very close, as it needs to be finished before testing commences. The last recent update that impacts Dream Chaser's first launch is ULA's Vulcan Centaur. On August 14, 2019, it was announced that all Dream Chaser ISS cargo flights would be carried into orbit by ULA's Vulcan launch vehicle. The Tenacity launch is meant to happen on the second ever launch of Vulcan. The first launch of Vulcan is currently a couple months behind but still making good progress. Just yesterday, ULA CEO Tori Bruno tweeted saying, a thing of beauty. This included an image of Vulcan's first stage going vertical. Assuming this first launch goes well and happens by around March, we can expect the second Vulcan to be ready on time for Tenacity's launch. Now that we know more about Dream Chaser's progress and what its next steps are, we can take a closer look at the unique design and features the spacecraft offers. One of the downfalls of the space shuttle was its heat shield. The heat shield was comprised of tens of thousands of individual tiles that took a lot of time to refurbish and fix between missions, not to mention a host of other issues. For years now, Sierra Space has been working to develop and create a new and improved heat shield capable of protecting Dream Chaser upon re-entry. To be specific, around 2,000 of these tiles will protect Dream Chaser from temperatures that could reach upwards of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit on entry, while keeping the vehicle itself at only 350 degrees Fahrenheit. One unique aspect of these tiles is their different colors depending on their location on the spacecraft. In this case, the white tiles reject more heat from the sun while on orbit, which helps to keep the components within Dream Chaser cooler. As for size, Dream Chaser is around 30 feet long, or about one-fourth the total length of the space shuttle. In comparison, more than 24,000 tiles were used on NASA's space shuttle orbiters. Back in 2015, Sierra Nevada Corporation, the parent company of Sierra Space, successfully completed several significant thermal protection system or TPS material development tests for its Dream Chaser spacecraft. At the time, the corporate vice president of SNC Space Systems commented, Safety of crew and cargo is most important to our team as we continue to mature the spacecraft design. 
For several years, we've worked collaboratively with Johnson and Ames, leveraging their existing infrastructure, materials, and expertise to mature and customize the TPS for our unique spacecraft. Our TPS is lighter, stronger, and more efficient than previous generations. We have met or exceeded all mission requirements. The overall goal being, produce a simple yet effective heat shield system that can be used for many missions, something that will be put to the test not long from now. With this in mind, we can focus on the mission profile of Tenacity's first launch. Dream Chaser features three separate variants, named DC-100, DC-200, and DC-300. DC-200 is a crewed variant which we got a sneak peek of recently when Zero Space released an image of the space plane. DC-300 is an uncrewed variant with additional capabilities to MEO and GEO rather than just low Earth orbit. DC-100 is the regular uncrewed variant which will fly on Vulcan later this year. The cargo version of the SNC Dream Chaser is called the Dream Chaser Cargo System, or DCCS, and after development is completed, will fly resupply flights to the ISS under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services 2 program. Featuring an expendable cargo module mounting solar panels, the spacecraft will be capable of returning 1,750 kilograms or 3,860 pounds to Earth while undergoing maximum reentry forces of 1.5 Gs. The mission will begin with Vulcan lifting off and Dream Chaser tenacity stowed within its fairings. Specifically, to meet CRS-2 guidelines, the cargo Dream Chaser will have folding wings and fit within a 5 meter diameter payload fairing, in contrast to the crew Dream Chaser, which is intended to launch without a fairing. Not long after stage separation, Vulcan's fairings will open and reveal tenacity. Next, tenacity will separate from the upper stage and soon after deploy its two wings. From here, it will make its way to the International Space Station and dock. An expendable cargo module will launch attached to the back of the spacecraft expanding the cargo uplift capacity and supporting the disposal of up to 3,250 kilograms or 7,170 pounds of trash. Total uplift is planned for 5,000 kilograms or 11,000 pounds pressurized and 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds unpressurized. The expendable cargo module is called Shooting Star. Assuming everything has gone according to plan up until this point, Tenacity will stay docked at the ISS for a while before it undocks and begins its journey back. After the cargo is loaded onto the space station, astronauts can fill the Shooting Star with their trash. As Tenacity re-enters Earth's atmosphere, the shooting star will detach and disintegrate. Tenacity will then attempt to not only withstand the extreme temperatures and forces upon re-entry, but also navigate and fly back for a soft and calculated landing on a runway. Sierra Space is still working toward a third quarter launch of Dream Chaser Tenacity later this year. The company recently confirmed that Tenacity is almost complete and will soon be shipped to one of NASA's facilities for final testing prior to launch. In addition, ULA's Vulcan Centaur is only weeks away from its first launch ever. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.